Hey, in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to remove a white background, how to fine tune your selections with the select and mask dialog box, the quick selection tool, the magic wand, and the polygonal lasso tool. These images are all from Adobe Stock. You can see the numbers in the tabs above if you wanted to go license them, but you can do these techniques very easily on your own images. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. That's awesome! What? So the tool that's going to do the bulk of the work for me quickly is the tragic wand tool. I mean the magic wand tool. I'm just kidding. It used to be not a great tool, but now it does real well at single source colors. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to leave my sample size at point sample, which means it's literally just picking one, one pixel I click on, which is about what I want. I've got contiguous checked. So that means when I click in the white area, it's only going to get the things that it can get to. Now notice here, I've got so much white in the reflection of the metal, it bit into that. I'll show you how to fix it. Notice here, it didn't get this area. So I just hold down the shift key to add to my selection. That works with any selection tool. You can see the little plus icon happen when I hold down the shift key. So I'll select that, I'll select this, I'll select that. Oops, don't wanna select that. That's actually a highlight. I'll select this little area right here. This is a problem. I'll select this little area here. So now I've gotten pretty far pretty fast. And what I wanna do now is go up to the select and mask tool. Currently I'm viewing this on a red overlay, which is how I like to work. And then you can decide, well, currently I've selected the white, but ultimately I want the woman with the mask. So I'm going to invert this selection. So it will show me what I've selected and it shows me very quickly, you know, what isn't selected that should be. Now, because this is going to be so complicated in that the pixel difference isn't that much, I'm going to try, but I doubt it'll work. I'll click just the quick selection tool, make my brush super small. And yeah, I don't know if Photoshop can handle that. Yeah, it's never going to be quite as good as I could do this manually. You can do it with the pen tool. But if you don't like the pen tool, the polygonal lasso tool is a really great one. It gives you straight edges with every click. But here's the thing. If you make enough clicks, it's going to give you a rounded edge. I'm not going to worry about the hair. I'm going to show you a, a better tool for the hair. See, I'm just going around. Now, as you're doing this and you get to the point where what you want is outside the area, just hold down the hand tool, which is activated by hitting the space bar. And that allows you to pan your image wherever you want. And it just temporarily postpones the selection you're making. So I'll let go of the space bar and I can continue selecting. At any time, I can zoom back out by hitting command minus space bar to move around. And then just double click to close that selection loop. I'm going to go here, command space bar, drag for a quick zoom. Six and a half hours later. So now let me show you real quick how to refine this edge around the hair. An edge brush, which is the second brush on the left. Make my brush size a little bigger with the right bracket tool. And I'm just going to paint over the edge, keeping the circle half on the thing I want and half into the thing I don't want. See, it's going to do a really sophisticated job of picking up those little hairs. And remember to let go of your mouse every now and then to let AI in Photoshop kind of figure out the area that I'm, I'm wanting to select. It's going to reconfigure every time I, I let go. See how these little hairs here? I need to come back up and select that differently. But see how these, these very fine-tuned hairs? This is all you do. You just pass over it with this tool and it will refine your edge selections wonderfully. And then after I've done that, I typically like to go to Smart Radius, pull this up, go to Smooth about... Uh, it depends on the image, but here I'd be at two to four pixels, maybe half a pixel of a feather. And then it would come down to selection, new layer with layer mask. And that way it's going to duplicate my layer for me. So I'm, I'm not doing anything destructive to the original and it's created its own layer mask for me. I actually spent more time and created a, a selection already. So let's go ahead and jump to that. And the way you find that is you go up to select and load selection. See the one that's grayed out. If you have a select inactive, you can save your selection and it embeds it with your file. But I'm just going to load my selection. This is the name I gave it and I'll click yes. And I'm actually going to throw this layer away that we just created. And then I'm going to hit command or control J, which duplicates my layer my with my refined mask ready to go. Hey, I misspoke a bit here. This right here is what your layer panel should look like. You should have your original layer where the layer has been turned off and then you have it duplicated with a layer mask being applied, showing you your selection and then the transparent background. Mine doesn't have the layer mask, even though I said it did. 
but I've already applied my layer mask. It would be the same thing as you grabbing your layer mask and pulling it to the trash and then saying, and it says apply mask to layer before removing. And I, and I say, yes, apply. So this is what mine looks like right now. Again, keep your layer mask. Now back to the lecture. So that's how you quickly remove a white background. Now let me show you how to quickly integrate color cast with the, another scene. So I'm gonna grab this image and I'm gonna click and drag over to the tab. It's the quickest way to not waste your RAM. Drop it in. Photoshop has a top-down orientation, so I need to grab that background and pull it beneath the main subject so it appears behind the main subject. Command or Control minus, because I like to see an edge around my, my work. You can go up to Edit and Free Transform, or just hit Command or Control T, which is what I like to do. It gives me the bounding box and allowing me to resize and shape whatever it is that I want. Pull this out just a little bit. And yeah, I like that. I'm gonna hit enter. Now, if I want all of this image, I could go up to image and reveal all. And now it showed me my whole new background, which will let me select the, the main subject layer, hit the move tool. And now I can kind of reconfigure her to my aesthetic needs. So we need to match this blue with her. Quick way to do this, especially with this very stylized background, is just to go to the background layer, Command or Control J to duplicate it, pull it above the main subject layer, go up to filter, down to blur, and choose average. So it will average all the colors together. And then I'll hold down the Alt or Option key to say only apply it to the layer beneath. And by clipping it, this is called creating a clipping mask. So again, I'm holding the Alt or Option key, hovering between my two layers and clicking. So this is what it did, but I only want the color. So go to your layer blend mode and go down and choose color. So that's the color. And it's applying it real heavy handed, which if I want this kind of overall tint, I could stop here. But if I want to make it more subtle, I just drag the opacity down a little bit to bring back a little bit of her skin tone, something like that. And now I want to merge these layers together so I can manipulate them a bit. So I'm going to hit the command option shift letter E. Doesn't matter whether it was three layers or 3000. It's now on its own layer. Now from here, I think I'd like to add some contrast and this kind of has a dreamy undertone anyway. So let me show you a, a pretty cool technique. Hit Command or Control J again. This doesn't seem like it's gonna work, but trust me, it looks good. Go to Blur and Gaussian Blur and blur the image just so you can still see it. You know, not like totally like this, but just where it's definitely blurry. Hit OK. Now, obviously that looks pretty bad, but if you go up to your blend mode and choose Overlay or Soft Light, it's gonna throw in the contrast and it's just going to keep a little bit of that, that uh, dreamy feel. And, and what we're seeing is this adds contrast as well. Soft light is about half power of overlay. So I'm going to choose that, which I like. I'm going to duplicate that one more time. And I'm going to choose normal for the layer because I want the blur to go around the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm going to go ahead and hold down the alt or option key. So it will load as a black mask hiding this layer. Remember black conceals, white reveals. Then I'll hit B for the brush. I'll look at my foreground background swatches. I need white in the foreground because I'm painting on the black mask over here. So I'll hit X, right bracket key. I'm going to look up and make sure that my mode is set to normal. And then I'm going to just paint in a little bit of that blur. Now I'm knocking down my D-Max and that's a problem. So now the rich blacks of her, they don't match with the rich blacks here. So I, I will need to go in and figure out how to get those to, to match. I'll use, I'll choose darken. That's going to leave the blur, but it'll get the blacks of the background to match the blacks of the foreground. Now, how about drawing in, dropping in another background real quick. We've done all this masking work, right? So what I'll do is I'll take all of this stuff, hit command or control G, turn off that layer group, turn off this image underneath, and I'll go grab another image. How about this one? Pull it over, drop it down, pull it below the subject, command T to free transform, hold down the alt or option key so it free transforms from the middle, pull it over. I like that, command minus. So I might wanna stretch this a touch, hit enter, and then go up to image and reveal all so I can see all of that. Select the layer with the person with the mask, hit the V key so I can move her. And now I just need to integrate the color and let's try the same technique. Command or control J, pull it to the top, go up to filter, blur, average, Alt click between the two. So it only applies that color average to the model. Go up to blend mode and say, I just want color. Now here I need to drag the opacity way down because the background isn't that stylized. So I just need a tint of that color. So I'm, I'm, at, I'm just applying maybe, what is that? 32%, turn it off, turn it on. Yeah, that, that gives it more of a feel of it actually being there. I'll compress this to its own layer by hitting command option shift letter E. And then what I can do is pull this color layer to all of it. 
by holding down the alt or option key and dragging it up. And that's now applying to everything on this field. So see how it's giving that warm color contamination here. So I'll do the same thing. Command option shift letter E. So it's its own thing again. Command J it to duplicate, to do that technique we just did where you go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur that top image. Then go to overlay or soft light. And if it's too powerful, just, you know, drag the opacity down a little bit. It doesn't have to be that dramatic. But there you go. That's how you quickly remove a white background and color match your subject to your new scenes. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>